I have a, a question I got on YouTube. It says, when you can immediately point out stuff like BT after aerial BT to punish with 5K, do you have to laugh for that knowledge? How does it come to you so fast? I struggle so much because my brain can't find answers fast enough mid-match to beat whatever stuff my opponent is countering me with. That's a great question. So I did jump, jump D into Behemoth. Then he blocked it, and then Hotashi hit 5k. 5k just didn't reach me. And then my Behemoth smoked his uh, 5k. How do I figure out shit like this? How do you come up with new strategies and ideas and things and then do them in the video game? I didn't really do that much. I saw someone else do jump D into Behemoth Typhoon with Gold Lewis. And I thought to myself, why would you do that when his jump D is so good? This is when the character first came out. And then I realized like, oh, sometimes jump D hits and you don't always have the ability to reach with a normal after and you have to like land and then do behemoth. Or if you get a counter hit, you have to like land and then do dash and then do far slash and then do behemoth. Like it's not really that easy. And if it's air to air, sometimes you do jump D and then it pushes back so far that like you can't really get anything else. So jump D into Behemoth is great. It combos on that air to air situation. It does a bunch of chip. It does a bunch of risk. That seems pretty good. So step one is I didn't even come up with jump D into Behemoth. I saw someone else do it. Then I went into training mode and tried it and was like, oh, you can do a few different Behemoths. So I practiced a few and picked the one that I thought I could do the most and hit the most. Step two, I did jump D into Behemoth one time. And then someone in the chat was like, what is that on block? And I was like, I don't know. I never looked that far. So then I learned that it was negative. It's minus. I didn't even think to try it, whether it was plus or minus. I was just like happy it worked, right? So step three was like, well, we're negative, but this is an important part. After you block Jump D into Air Behemoth, you're pretty far away a lot of times, right? If you do like the tail end of Jump D with Gold Lewis, it like the pushback on that and Behemoth Typhoon is so far that even though you're negative, like you're only slightly negative, like in the single digits, and the chances of a button reaching that could punish you is pretty unlikely unless they IB it or you do it very close. So I found that out and I was like, wait a minute, can I just create like a spacing trap off of this? Can I just do an attack or another jump D or like a behemoth after this? Because even though I'm like, let's say I'm negative six or seven on this, if you're this far away, being minus five or minus six or whatever, it doesn't really have any consequences on you if you're that far away, right? It's right in the range where Behemoth Typhoon is a good move to do. And it's very unlikely for someone to like block that move and then backdash at that range without challenging. You normally they think to themselves like, hmm, it's probably my turn to challenge. Like they're so far away, right? And if they do start to back up, you can always just change what your idea is. So that's how I came up with the idea. It was just a combination of like seeing other people do something thinking to myself, why do they do that? Like, what's the value in doing that? Trying it myself and then seeing if it's good or bad and then learning more things off of it. Like, like, oh, maybe I can do this or oh, do that. You're a Sage Am fan and even now. the set has a great example of how this idea can develop. I beat Hotashi's 5K and then afterwards he tried 2S and 2S traded. And oh, he was like, Sage what the Am fuck? Why now? did this trade, right? God. So next time he backdashed my Behemoth Typhoon with and then he fukioed in and command grabbed me, right? That was his adjustment. He had never seen this situation. And he was like, fuck this. If this behemoth is coming, I'll just get out of the way and whiff punish it. Just through the natural, like, you know, process of elimination, found out an idea about what to do. If you yourself don't know if something is good or not, or how to find out if something is good, you should just watch strong players and see, like, what do they do? And when you see an option that they're doing all the time, Ask yourself, like, why are they doing that option? What is the purpose of doing that? What are they gaining from it? And what are they doing that you like or don't like? And if you watch people play the same character, you'll probably see that they do different things. Even though they are both strong with some character, they might not play in the same way. A great example of this is if you watch Gold Lewis players, I usually do meaty behemoth typhoon, right? Or meaty close slash. If you watch like backpack, he never does that, basically. Every time he gets a knockdown, he does super jump, air dash jump age or super jump safe jump right so he always goes for like safe jumps after he gets knocked down almost always have you ever seen me do this instead of doing run up behemoth you know by always safe jumping it opens you up to do like cross up air behemoths from super jump or like new options or ideas it also means you never have to worry about reversal and you can always whiff and then go for throw or low or do something different off of it if you want to. And then he's going to do close slash and overhead behemoth. Yeah, see, the, like, his pressure is very different than how I would pressure. Meaty behemoth is not a safe jump. However, the way to think about Gold Lewis is the more things you do before your, your typhoon, 
the weaker your pressure is to FD and IFD. Easier to mash on probably on my pressure than his. However, it's like a little bit easier for me to stick to someone than it is if you do the safe jump. You may watch and think, yeah, I am gonna do that. I love that safe jump. That looks great. I never have to worry about a wake up DP. That looks awesome. Or you may think like, well, if they're gonna DP, I'm just gonna bait it. I'd rather just be close and get pressure off my behemoths. And both of them are good. They both have their own strengths and weaknesses, right? In fact, I would do that against some characters. I used to do that in the last patch, especially against Leo. So even if you watch somebody who's good and you don't do the stuff that they do, maybe you like something else or maybe you do something in a different way, understanding why they do it is very important because it will help you improve your own decision making and it will help you understand why like the option is strong or weak or what the merits and downsides of like for people who are familiar with fighting games picking good options is very easy because you know what good options are like when i see a normal i can tell you whether the normal is good or not very quickly i don't need to look at the frame data for it i can simply look at watch a normal being hit and be like that normal is good if someone's new they're like i don't know why this normal is good or bad what does it do most of the time also, you should ask yourself when you're doing something, what's the purpose behind doing it? If I can't think of a reason why I did it, it's probably a bad idea. If it doesn't have an objective or a purpose, it's probably not that strong of a response. If you're not sure who to look up, either look up streams and try to watch players on streams. Check the rating update website and look for strong players near the top to check out. Check the replay uploaders who upload number one ranked testament versus X. Those are like the three easy places to find people. The second part of this question, which I think is, is honestly almost its own situation is my brain can't find answers fast enough mid match to beat whatever stuff my opponent is countering me with a very relatable feeling, I think, for a lot of people. And the more you play and the better you are, the faster and faster and faster the video game gets. When you watch people who play at a high level in tournament, they're making really complex decisions, seemingly, especially right immediately over and over and over the answer is that most people have a, a general set of options that they are going to do that are strong reliable choices and if they're going to do anything that requires intense brain power it's usually specifically because they're looking for something that their opponent's going to do or they're looking for an unnatural response that is specific to some situation in neutral against high blood nago with gold lewis i am going to be dash blocking at him and then c is 2h currently being pressed in the video game if 2h is not being pressed then my generic snap decision is continue dashing forward dash and then jump so that i can attack the airspace in front of me or if i have security gauge backdash and set up drone or something like that. And I don't have to think about it because I've done those things so many times that I will just do one immediately. I don't I don't even have to like take a second. I will dash up, recognize that the thing I'm looking for is not happening, make a decision about one of those three options and just pick one and then go and do it. That's what most people are doing most of the time. They're they're moving around the screen looking for specific things and if those things don't happen, they pick one of their strong safe or consistent options and then do one if you're playing biking and you're like not sure what you're doing in neutral you're dashing forward and then you're going to do kabari or you're going to do 2h or you're going to do dash forward air dash back to tommy to play safe and defend the space in front of you or dash forward air dash jump s right or dash run far and then do far slash all of those options are quite strong they're all very useful they all cover different things and None of them are particularly risky and you can do all of those things without really thinking about what your opponent is doing that much most of the time once you're good at the character and if one of them's not working it's losing to some option then you'll pick a new option next time and the only thought you have to make is x didn't work i'll now do y or z that's it that's what you're thinking in the match right most responses are very automatic they just take time drilling them into your system so that you no longer have to think about them i'm sure if you guys have ever watched like uh chess chess players they talk about how like they don't have to think when they're just following the line. They're like, okay, these are the generic moves that I'm going to do that I have pre-prepared. They know what they're going to get into. And like, if their opponent plays this, they play this. If they play this, they play this. And they just do it over and over. And then once they hit the spot in the board where like it's new and they're like, okay, that's when they have to like break out of flow charting and just playing pieces instantly and think to themselves, okay, what's the right answer here? And that is the same kind of idea for fighting games In fighting games it's the same thing in very fast paced games you shouldn't be thinking about every single thing your opponent is doing all the time you should only be thinking if they're presenting an option that your flowchart or your brain is not ready to deal with if they're doing something that's really unique you might have to spend a second thinking 
do I, what do I beat that with? Right. But if it's something that you've seen many, many, many times, you probably don't even have to think about your response to beat it. You just know your flow chart will probably be okay. As long as you're doing options that are pretty strong and you know how to break it in most matchups, you should think to yourself also before the match starts, am I supposed to do anything specific in here that I don't normally need to do? Do I need to play aggressively or defensively in the match? Like who needs to be the person who's more forward, if one way or another is clear, then like, what are you looking out for on the way in, right? Just ask yourself these questions so that you can make the best choices. When you first start every response, you have to think constantly, what are my attacks? What am I doing? What is this? Your generic flow chart will get better and better and better and better. The more you play a character, the more you played matchups, the more you played a game, the other levels and layers come from knowing how to break that flow chart and do other stuff. There's a lot of players you'll play who just flow chart and never change. They always do the same thing. And like they pick strong characters, they pick the strongest options and they do the strong options and they just rotate the powerful options. And when they're right, they are just very impossible to stop sometimes because they just do the good things and the good things are good. Their weakness is that their play style is very, it's like incredibly logical and they just try to do the strong thing over and over. It can make them very like uh, rhythmic and also very easy to expect what their next response will be. So even though those responses are all very strong, you can kind of know always what to expect. If those options can be stopped or if you're wiggly and you do weird stuff, you might surprise them. That kind of play style is good to play against because it teaches you the most quote unquote optimal responses for that character, right? They'll, they'll just do strong, good things over and over, but you also have to practice against the weirdo stuff. The archetypes that players like that usually play tend to have lots of room for setups and things where like maybe they do completely different setups than someone else. So you're just not used to the fuzzy timing on some other weird setup that you're like, wait, I've never seen them. That's the thing is like some things are so good. It doesn't matter. Even if you know, that is a good example. Kai doing stun dipper. Like, you know, Kai is going to do stun dipper, but like, does it matter? It just means you got to respect it and block it. The difference is like if you block it or not, because if you're not going to block it, you're just going to die. <laughs> My own dad says, you know, I was in LA a couple of days ago and I saw a guy and I swore up and down it was you. And I was like, you are kidding me. Not you too. This is not real. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, I was so sure it was you. I saw like every single white guy looks like Sejan meme flash before my eyes. If my own family has no idea how to differentiate me between random other white people, how can I expect the internet? to have that ability. I have no defense.